Well, Amar, um, welcome to the club. So, first of all, um, what attracts you to Aldershot? Why Aldershot? Great club. Got the call at the weekend uh, from the new manager and um, excited straight away. Um, had some great, great battles here. I've watched a few games as a fan, and um, the chance to come and work for a club like this was something that um, you know I think every coach or manager would love to do. And uh, we remember you as a defender, a big, strong defender, played against us many times, um, scored a good goal against us as well. What are you like as a coach, though? What can we expect from you as a coach? You know what? I love football. Um, I've been very, very fortunate. I've played at the very top, um, and I've, I've worked in non-league, and I've enjoyed success. Um, I've got you know a club in the national league, up to League One as a captain, and um, I've always kind of been you know a leader, someone who wants to inspire others. And um, I just want to develop players and work at a club that have the same ethos of me. You know, want to work hard, be a family, and, and get success. So just want to develop players and create a great environment where everyone wants to be here. And this is a fantastic club. I mean, playing here for years, always a great atmosphere. It's always a place I love to come. And if we can get it rocking again, you know, that would be amazing. And you know, looking really forward to the challenge ahead. And what was the draw to working with Danny? Did you work with him before? What, what did you know about him? So when I uh, first stopped playing after a really bad injury at Barnet, I went into West Ham's academy. And uh, Surly was my boss. And to be honest, I was so impressed with the way he worked with the players and, and him as a coach. Doing my badges and my A license now, um, it was brilliant to work with people like that. And over the course of your career, you always come across managers and players that really sort of impress you. So when he got the opportunity to take over at Braintree, you know, we kept in touch and obviously we played each other last year as I'm a coach at Maidstone. And I was really impressed with what he did uh, in the short space of time that, that he had. And I think people like that just need the right environment, the right platform to really flourish. And I don't think there's any better platform than a club like Aldershot. So the fact that you know, I've worked with him before, really impressed. And I know he can develop me and help me as a coach and a manager. And um, you know what a great environment. So to work with someone like that, I'm, I'm very privileged to, to be at a club like Aldershot and actually to be working with a, a, a great manager like Danny Sell. And you've also um, got another side too. You do a lot of community work, a lot of work with Kick It Out and Fans for the Diversity. You've done some work with the foundation here actually recently. Um, what can you tell us about that? Yeah, so I'm the Diversity and Campaigns Manager at the Football Supports Federation and I work in partnership with Kick It Out. So after retiring, I'm really, really passionate about equality and diversity. I was one of the first British Asians to play football in this country and um, sort of 27 years later, there's still a lack of Asians playing football and this is something I want to change and I work primarily with football fans. So trying to make the game as inclusive as possible and trying to work with fans all across the country to really improve that match day experience and actually get the community more involved in the club. So I've had a few meetings here over the last few months, um, uh, coincidentally, around developing the community and actually looking to create links with the army and the Nepalese community. So it's something that I can help the club in terms of that side and develop that. But um, you know, working for the Football Support Federation Kick It Out has been amazing over the last five years and I've managed to do it um, whilst coaching and managing. So it's something that I love, I'm passionate about. Um, and I'm just really happy to be at a club that actually understand that and, and, and actually want to sort of support and, and, and take part in that. And how's the last few hours been for you? Have you been non-stop on the phone trying to get players in? It's been really, really crazy because obviously, um, you know, working at Maidstone with John Still, who, you know, was my manager for eight years, and Hakan, who's been absolutely brilliant with me, giving me the opportunity to go and work at a club as, as big as Maidstone was, was been fantastic and actually we've been preparing for the, for the new season. And then obviously, you know, what football's like, um, a lot can happen in, in a day and you get a call and, you know, you've got to make a decision and all of a sudden your mindset's changed. You know, you've got a different remit, a different club and you've got a different approach. So it's been really, really, um, it's been fun. You know what, I love a challenge and this is what football's all about. It's, it's about being in these positions where, you know, people are calling you and people want you to, to be involved in, in what they're doing. So it's been exciting because the last two months at Mainstone have been great. I've really enjoyed working with Hack and, and John Steele, but you know this is a new challenge now, and it's now looking forward to the new season, developing a squad, bringing in players. But in all honesty, I think the club sells itself. You know, when you pick up the phone and you speak to a player and tell them you're all the shot, they know what the club's about and they know where this club deserves and needs to be. And hopefully, we can get them involved in that in that challenge to get them back to where we should be. Okay, well, thank you for your time, Emma. Can't wait to have you started it. No problem, looking forward to it. Thank you.